In this video, I'm going to show you how we can look at an athlete's trend of a different metric over time. Represented in the gray value here is counter movement jump. And then overlay that with the phase that they are currently completing. So right now I have three different colors represented of three different types of phases. We have blue represents a capacity, red represents a strength, and then green represents a power phase. This is going to be a really useful visual if you are just trying to see how each phase can affect a different metric that you care about. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back. And in order to get started with this video, um, just to orient you to the sheet, um, on the left-hand side here, we have an athlete name and date, and then as well as the information for that athlete for that test. Now, whenever we're setting up our data, it's really important to have anything that we might want to represent on a chart in um, any way in the data set. So for example, in this data set, um, if you remember from the chart in the intro, we want to represent the week and not the date, as well as the phase that the athlete is in. So what we're going to do is write a formula first to determine what the week is, and then we'll write um, in our phases. So the first thing I want to do is we can use this formula called week num. So if we type equals week num, and then open that up, and I select the date, it's going to automatically give me a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so on and so forth. And that can be fine in a lot of instances. However, the problem arises if we try to arrange these um, in order in something like a pivot chart. Um, 1 and 10 and 11 and things like that get mixed up. So what we're going to want to do is just stick a 0 in front of any number that is not greater than 10. So 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, etc. And then that will ensure that they all have the same number of digits and they're all organized the same way. So in order to do that, we can just um, put a, an if formula around this week num formula. So I can type if week num is less than 10, then what I want to do is have 0 and week num, the date, B2 in this case, if it isn't less than 10, then I just want week num, the, the uh, cell, and then I'll close that whole thing off. And you can see it's just changed this to 0, 1. If I drag this all the way down, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When it gets to 10, 11, 12, 13, um, we still have those being represented in the same way that they already were. Now from there, I have three different phases that we'll use for the purposes of this video. We might have a capacity phase. So I'll type capacity in there. Maybe we do that for four weeks. Maybe then we go to a strength phase. Do that for another four weeks. Then we do a power phase. And we do that for um, another four weeks. Then maybe we go strength power for a block. Then maybe we go capacity strength for a block then strength power for another block and we finished on sort of that power for the last two weeks. <clears throat> and the reason that this is important is when we go to chart we're going to actually be looking what phase the athlete was in and then doing our coloring based on that. So you might have this all set up in a master sheet where in week one you were in capacity so it's automatically pulling this in but for the purposes of this video what we'll do is we'll just type those in there. So from there, what we're going to do is create a bit of a drop down menu and then that will pull all the data into this area and then that allows us to create our chart. So interestingly enough, there's a new way to create drop downs in Google Sheets. If I just type at drop down, I can create a drop down menu and it's referring to cell video H2 and I want a drop down from a range and for our range we will actually select column A and our values are stored in A2 all the way down. When I hit OK, it's done. Now I can select Athlete 1. So that's just an interesting change that Google Sheets has made. The old way to do it would be go, go to um, Data and then Data Validation, and it would still work the exact same way. But um, give that a try on your Google Sheets and see if it speeds up your process a little bit. So from there, what we want to do is filter out any of the values that match our current um, drop down menu selection, which in this case is athlete one. So I'm going to type equals filter. 
and I know I want multiple ranges, so we're gonna create an array inside a filter. I need a squiggly bracket, and the first thing we want is the weeks. So I'm gonna select the weeks column, and then comma, we want the phase column, comma, we want the CMJ, and I'll close off my squiggly brackets, and then comma, when the name column is equal to the name that we have selected, and I'll close that off. So right away you'll see that all of our data ends up right here. I'm just going to um, center justify that to make it look a little nicer. Now, in order to create our chart, what we need is a value in these columns that signifies what phase we're actually in. So I'm gonna do this, we could do an if function, we could type something like if um, this, is equal to this, and I'll just lock that in there. Then I want you to create a value of one, otherwise a value of nothing, and I could easily just drag that down and it would work fine, so you can see whenever we're in capacity we get a value of one, otherwise we get a value of nothing. But I like to write one formula and then have it do everything for me, so I'm gonna do an array formula. So let's start from scratch. We'll say equals array formula, open that up, and I can say if len, so what len is doing is checking whether there is a value in the column of G, meaning that there is values in the actual data. So I'm gonna go from G um, four all the way down, and I know this is never gonna change, so I will lock this one in there. Then if, um, H4 all the way down is equal to, in this case, capacity. I'll lock in H4 all the way down because that will not change. And when I drag this, the only thing I'm going to want to change is the column. So I'll just lock in the column. Or so, sorry, the only thing I'm going to want to change is the column. So I'll lock in the row. Then I want to put a value of one, otherwise a value of nothing close that if formula off, and then if the first thing isn't true, then I want a value of nothing as well. Close the whole thing off, and when I hit enter, it's gonna give me an error because there are values down there, but now it should work. Oh, we're still getting our error, and the reason for that is because um, we don't actually have our ranges starting at the right spot, so this one starts at three, we need to start at four. Now when I hit enter, you can see now all of my values arrive for um, whenever there is capacity. Now because these are all locked in, when I drag this across, it will automatically populate the other two because now instead of um, J3, it's matching for K3, and instead of J3, it's matching for L3. So if I change these to be power, you can see that it changes where the ones actually go to. And this is important because this allows you to change your phase names as you see fit. And then that allows you to create the different um, categories that you need. So now that our data is all set up, let's make our chart. So I'm gonna select all of my data. I want these different ranges. I'm just holding down control while I do this. And I'm going to go to insert, insert chart and then it's gonna give me this chart that's a bit ugly, but we can change it around. So from here, let's first put our ranges in the right spot. So along the bottom, we want the X to be our weeks, okay? So we don't need that in our Ys, and then we want these values to be our Ys. Instead of a column chart, we're going to choose what's called a combo chart, and right away you can see that it's starting to come together. So from there, I'm gonna to go to Customize. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to series. And what I'll do is I'll take this CMJ series. I'm gonna change this to a line and I'm going to give it a marker that's seven. And we'll keep this on the left axis. I personally like to go with a dashed line and we'll make it, I don't know, like this gray color here. Let's go a bit darker. So that's the first series. The second series is capacity. Let's give capacity sort of, I don't know, a blue color. We're gonna make it a stepped area, and we don't want it to have a line, so we'll make the line um, see-through, and then we'll give the area part um, 
10%, so we just want it to basically sit behind, and we'll put this on the right axis. And we're gonna do the same thing with strength. So we'll give strength sort of a red color. We'll take away the line stepped area. We'll make it 10% and put it on the right axis. And then power, we're gonna give it a green color. It's already green. We'll take away the line. We'll make it stepped area, 10%, put it on the right axis. So right away you can see how our chart is starting to come together. Now you'll notice that these kind of only go halfway up. So what we're gonna have to do is we've put them all on the axis on this side, but this axis goes all the way to two. So if we go to our right vertical axis, a max value for this would be one, a minimum value for this would be zero, and now you'll see that they actually cover the whole chart. We don't really need this part, so um, I can't delete it, but what I can do is I can just make the text color white and then make it really small. So instead of font size, let's make it one. That'll make it as small as possible. For our legend, I don't really want a legend because it's showing all those other series, but we probably want some titles. So our horizontal axis, maybe we want this to say week. And so now it says week down there. And we can take a look at that, make it maybe a bit bigger. And then maybe our chart title, we can be counter movement jump, phase by phase. And then maybe we'll bold that, make it black. And there we go. So you can see now we've got the counter movement jump and it's overlaid week to week with the phase in behind. And this is a really cool visual. We might, can, we might say, hey, in this power phase from weeks 9, 10, 11, 12, we had a pretty good increase in counter movement jump. We might've went too hard here because we actually went down the next week and then we were falling kind of into our strength phase and so on and so forth all the way through. Now all of this data is just made up, um, but it allows us to sort of see the different types of phases um, as we're working through with whatever metric we wanna track. So I hope this trick helps you out. If it does, please like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out. And then if you could share this with a colleague that you think might find it useful, that would also help the channel grow. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.